very excited to, to do this for y'all. And I remember not knowing any of this. Unfortunately, music theory was not well taught in my experience. And so if you notice in this material, there is the word theory does not appear. We don't need to prove theories at this point. We need to get some basics together to learn how to construct a scale, to learn how to construct a chord from a scale, and then how the different keys relate to each other. And I just wanted to pay homage to folks who tried to sort this out. This was not something that was figured out 10 years ago. And I think some of the problems with teaching it are inherent in the way it was developed. We look back to 500 BC, this is Pythagoras, and he was most uh, famous perhaps for his theorem regarding right triangles and the hypotenuse. But he also did experiments with a string and found that if you half the string, or if, if he had a 12 fret, he would have made the string half as long, you would have an octave. And so he sorted out all those relationships and the music in those times were more related to the relationship of two notes, the next note from the note you're, you're leaving. That was about 500 BC. Bothius, a Roman, translated um, Pythagoras's work into Latin and sort of kept it going because it wouldn't have been as well known. That was 500 AD or so. Then we come to Guido of Arezzo in Italy. And he was the, the person who got away from just the relationships of the note to each other and were able to then transcribe notes on a score. You see, th this was an early one where they were using square notes and only four score lines. He also developed solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and he developed a hand that was, uh, to me, not very useful. But if you were doing Gregorian chants, people liked it back in um, about 1000 AD. There were still limitations to that, and one of the limitations was um, addressed by Bach, and I just couldn't help putting two pictures of Johann here in that he did uh, the well-tempered clavier. And in that case, he uh, wrote pieces for each 12 major keys and 12 minor keys. So there are 24 pieces. And you think, well, that would just work out fine. Well, it turned out particularly in his day if you started playing in the key of F sharp, the intervals didn't work quite so well. And so that's what the well-tempered is all about, is trying to tweak that so that when you play the, the difference between a one, four, five in F sharp, it'll seem the same as playing it in C. So then that brings us to Miles Davis, who uh, has taken us past that and uh, a couple of quotes from Miles Davis, if you're not making a mistake, it's a mistake. So he's in, in favor of you pushing yourself into areas you didn't even know you didn't know. And then another quote from Miles Davis was, in improvisation, there are no mistakes. So if you hear a mistake, try to fix it on the next note, make it a chromatic run. There are lots of ways to have fun with this. I love some of the stuff from Thelonious Monk. And uh, he says, one is if, if you aren't the drummer, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be keeping time. And for jazz, you're supposed to know it when you hear it. So that's a definition for jazz, I guess. And then lastly, uh, from Thelonious, trying to explain music is trying to dance architecture, which I thought was a, a good observation. So, these folks and some unnamed musicians here who never bothered with all this stuff and still played great things, some of which we'll be playing ourselves and learning from. We're going to get down to the 
the music behind the vibrations of the strings. And this is built on a scale. So let's look at the C scale now and just think about your C string, the third string for um, GCEA. And if you're in um, baritone tuning, you could use the second string or the B string and just start at the first fret. Play the open C, go up two frets, play the D, two more frets, E, one fret, F, two, G, two, A, two, B, and finally there's C for the octave. Okay, if we then look below that, you can see that those same notes are laid out on a piano very differently. So in general, music has been described in relation to a piano. There's no reason I would look at this linear scale and say, okay, well, this is a whole tone and this is a half tone. So I'm going to get to that in a minute, but these sharps are sort of hidden from us and we're given the C scale without thinking about it, just the next white note going up for a piano. On a ukulele, that's not the case, but for any major scale, if you start on the root, which is the first note and go up two, two, one, as there's nothing between E and F, two, 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 one, nothing below between B and C, you'll end up at the octave. So just to do this exercise on paper, one way to approach it is to write all the notes and you can use sharps or flats. It'd be helpful if you knew whether that key contained sharps or flats. We'll get to that, but you can write all the notes, just like you were looking at all the frets, write all the notes and uh, walk two steps to D, D sharp E, E to F is one step, two steps to G, two steps to A, two steps to B and one to C. So this is the major scale and it's important to know that we can number these notes. So no matter what the scale is, the one note is your root note. Okay. Because you don't necessarily want to play this scale going up the fretboard every time, it would be very useful for you to learn the C scale at the nut and to be able to play that forwards and backwards without looking. And I know some of you know a lot of this and some of you don't, wouldn't have a problem playing that, but it's a goal for everybody. And then to go on and learn the next most frequent scales. So you can do this on the A string. This up here we can do on the A string and it'll also work. You would have to start three frets up to play C um, scale, of course. Okay. The reason I've chosen to call these steps is because I think semitones is already confusing to me. I'm like, okay, two semitones is a tone and that's one. So I just, once I got beyond that, it made this so simple. All the notes are the 12 notes in the chromatic scale. Every key would have a chromatic scale with every note going up to its octave. Each one of those is approximately one twelfth of an octave. And therefore a step is the same as one fret. And for me, this is an easier way to deal with playing a fretted instrument. As you go up two steps, you've got the next note. So remembering 221, 2221, it's like a phone number, will get you a major scale. Okay. If we wanted to, to instead write a minor scale, 
you'd think, well, gosh, you're going to have to learn a new number. Not the case. So the, you have the advantage of you could write all the notes out right here, just say, say for G, and then continue past G for a little bit, and then start on the sixth note. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so for G, the relative minor is E minor. So if you started on the sixth note and then went on using two, one, two, two, one, in the same pattern, you could write a minor scale. We're not gonna cover that. But I'm just saying that you don't have to do anything particularly different except start on the sixth note and use the same pattern. Likewise, it's helpful to know, to remember that the F, key of F major has B flat in it. That may be easy to remember if you've ever had a problem playing a B flat chord and somebody said, let's play it in F and you went, oh yeah, okay, yeah, sure. And I think, uh, at a lot of guitar jams, um, if you ask them to play it in F, they'll say, um, let's just play it in E or in G. How about that? It's not very friendly on a guitar. Certainly a lot of people can play it in whatever key you want to on a guitar and won't have a problem with it. I'm just saying the open notes can be your friend or your enemy, and it's just nice to have those open. And so, um, it's important to be able to know whether the F major scale has one flat that's B flat. So if we wanted to then transpose from C to F, we could take the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one in C, write the same thing below it in F, and then take the notes off the score and transpose a F for each C, a G for each D, and so forth. So this is the way you would use it to transpose from C to F. Transposing the chords is almost the same. So we'll get to that when we get to the chords. So this is so important, I believe, to be able to write a scale no matter what, and then know this is a scale for the key that we're playing in. So once you have the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we've numbered the, the uh, notes. This is why the numbers are important because then you can refer to the numbers of the notes in A scale and it could refer to any scale. So if we wanted to, pl to play a plain old C, uh, a C chord, we would need the one, three, and the five in C major, C, E, and G. So we would have options for how to do that because a ukulele has four strings and we really only need three strings. We just need, so that's C, E, G. We might uh, decide to play it using sort of a, I'd call it an A shape, but uh, you might know it as a B flat shape. So that's C using all four strings. If you want to use a one fingered C, we're not going to have the same notes in the arpeggio. So it has a whole different You, the other difference is you, you can hear that the open notes will continue to ring unless you deal with them. So it has a different feel. So if we want to use that same pattern for F now, we would take the F scale. We remember how to drive that here. We're using flats because as we have to know it's going to include a B flat and just go to two, one, B flat, two, 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 one, and we end up with the F scale 
the numbers are just like the C scale, and we would choose one, three, and five for our F major chord. So we'd have F, A, and C. And you can think about how many different ways you know to play the F major uh, chord. Likewise, we can do the same thing with G using 2-2-1, You know that at the end, it's going to have to be a one-step situation here. And so this is the F sharp. It comes right below, before the G. There's only one step there. So this G would then give us G, B, and D. And the way to play, uh, the, the simplest way to play a G chord would include G, D, G, and B. So you're getting this open G down here. You gotta know that's coming with this shape. The uh, fretboard learning tool that's on the website has a couple of um, mnemonics. And then it also has an empty fretboard for you to practice. And so you can print out that two-sided two, two page and have this way to remember the fretboard in the key of C, and then a, a empty fretboard that you can practice any key in. So now I would like to move from major chords to dominant seventh chords, or seventh chords. And just to get to deal with the word dominant, uh, this refers to the, the five chord, the G chord and the C um, chord progression. So let's not worry about dominant, but you may see it associated with seventh chords all over the place. So let's just talk about seventh chords. We've got a, uh, a C scale derived here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We did that by taking all the notes and using two, two, one, two, 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 one. And then in order to, to make a, G, a C seventh chord, what we need to do is to add to C, E, and G, one, three, and five, we need to add the flatted seventh. So the seventh note in the C scale is a B, the flatted seventh is a B flat. And so we play a C chord, it's gonna sound fine. And if we then play that B flat as a So that not only gives you a different chord, but it gives you some motion. And we'll see that in some of the songs we play later on. Um, so this flatted seventh is important and it's an addition to the major so it's a way that now you need four notes on your four strings. If you wanted to play a five note chord, you would have to leave something out. And usually the five note is the most expendable um, because the three note tells you something about whether it's major or minor. And this would tell you that it's a flatted seventh. Suppose we want to do the same thing for G. We've already seen how to derive this G major scale. We have it numbered, and we look at the numbers here. The F sharp is our seven note. So we're going to need to flatten that note, making an F. And so our G seventh chord is G, B, D, F. And we see this here in this form of it we're going to just move the, from the G here to the F two frets lower. So that's gonna give us a G seventh. An F seventh chord, again, is derived from the major chord, F A C. We need a flatted F, a flatted seventh. The seventh is an E. And so the flatted seventh is an E flat. So this would, a F A C is our um, major F chord. You add E flat to that and that'll give you an F seventh. You can play the F seventh right off of your 
most common F-shaped chord by adding your um, ring finger to the third fret, third string, that being the F major chord, and you can hear the... And so this is the E flat, and you can also play that chord with C on top as shown there. And the benefit, one benefit to that is that you could walk that chord from G to F. And it's the same shape as an E seventh, because you're not you're using the nut. So this is a closed chord because it, it touches all four strings and that makes it movable, which is very useful. Sevenths are going to be very important to us. We're going to review this when we get to the blues. And so this is just to show you how, how to find a seventh, that flatted seventh, and then it goes in. It's a four note chord. So looking at the next page might make you feel a little daunted. There's a lot of numbers there. But what if I told you this is all you had to know and that much of it is pretty simple. So we've just learned or, or reviewed that a major chord, so if you had a C major chord, you would have a, the key right here. You'd say a C major chord is the one, three, and the five. We just learned that a C seventh is a one, three, five, and a flatted seventh. In a minor chord, you flatten the third. And that's what causes a, a change in, from a D to a D minor and makes it sound a little sad or wistful. So these are just formulas and these are ways to shortcut the formula so that you can write this above some words or below your music. And if you didn't get past the minor seventh, which just has a flatted third and a flatted seventh. That would be fine here. These are mostly just to explain where the suspended four and the suspended two comes from. You don't play the three note and you play one of these other notes. Most of the time it's a quick passing chord. And most of the time we don't use a diminished so much, we mostly use a diminished seventh. So that's a four note chord, diminished chord. These are ways of modifying the major chord, one, three, and five, to color the music in different ways. Okay, to do things that can make you feel differently, that can support your lyrics. But this is a C major seventh, not a C seventh. And so that includes the, that includes instead of the, that's going between the C major chord and the C seventh chord. This is a C major seventh with a B on top. And so it's used a lot in jazz, as we'll see later. You just have the, the key that you're in or the, um, before the major seventh there, or it may be uh, connoted M-A-J seventh also. You might see that. All right, you're adding to the one, three, and five. So the, this is something you could refer to. I don't intend that you come down and memorize all these things, but it's just to show that if that's all there is, I mean, everything is, is just built off of that major scale with notes added to it, or you can find out what those notes should be. Um, I also use U chord, which is a... Uh, uh, iOS app and that is a thing you can have on your phone that will help you move back and forth between what notes you're playing and um, the name of the chord or you could go in the other direction. So let's take the major scale here which is the one here. We've numbered the notes okay and we can choose the notes off of the C scale uh, and we will play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. C, E, G would give us 
the major C major chord. Likewise, if we use D and use the C major scale notes, we would end up with a minor chord because for a D major chord, this would be F sharp. So this is DFA, a minor chord. And likewise with E minor, G sharp would be here. Here's the four chord and the five chord. And so this is called a chorded scale or a harmonized scale. And this is a standard way that you will see this. And so it's a good way to start thinking about what this D is. Most of the time in a C, in the song in the key of C, if you play a D, it'll be a D minor. We will see it most often with the six minor and A minor. So we have a couple of examples of that later. I'm using Roman numerals um, for the major chords, well, one, four, and five chords, and lowercase Roman numerals for the minor chords, two, three, and six, and diminished is kind of a special case. How would you know what key the song is in? A couple of techniques are to look at the first chord, a lot of times it'll start with the one chord. It may finish with the one chord. And so that would be your hypothesis that I'm playing. We'll try this on a uh, song later, but then also look into the song and see, do I see the four chord and the five chord? Is the six chord a minor if I think I'm playing in C? But in general, the one chord is sort of at home. You could. So going away is generally the four chord, the five chord gives you some inherent tension and the seventh of the five chord, which is the dominant seven, will increase the tension any, even more. And that five seven wants to move away from that to get back to the home or the uh, one chord. And now all I've done is to use the most common keys here C, G, D, A, and F that we play in and sort of laid these out for you. If you're tr trying to remember what the, what the chord progression is and what you're really needing is the one, four, and five, you could just use your hand and use your thumb for the one chord. C, D, E, F is the four chord. G is the five chord. And then you just have to remember that A comes after G. That's a good way to do it if you are in a hurry and it will work up till you run out of fingers. G has one sharp in it. We saw that in the scale. And so when you, uh, if you have a score in front of you, which we'll see an example of, it would tell you how many sharps this has or flats. It would not tell you whether the, it's a, a minor or a major key that it's written in. You'll have to sort that out on your own. So even a score does not necessarily tell you that until you start playing it. This is also a way to move from one key to another. Here I'm presenting some information about how to find your vocal range. I think that's important to know what's your lowest note of singing and in particular, your highest note, so that you don't get on your solo and have to drop an octave to hit that note. And that's not your fault. You know, if, if I were arranging the song, maybe I would put it in C for, for ease of playing, but then you have to think through it again and saying, okay, can everybody sing this song? And so a way to, to transpose is again, to take the scale in C, Write it down here. Write the G major scale below it, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and take every chord and change it from C major, D minor, to A minor, B minor, C, maybe it'd be D or D seventh, E minor, F sharp diminished, and then G. So you just do these substitutions. In preparing that chord melody book, 
you sort of have to find something that fits on the ukulele fretboard and it's very friendly in the key of C, but that may not be what you want to play this song in. Most of the songs in that are from ragtime or the jazz area were not written in C. And so I did a lot of transposing to get it to a, a key that I could play in and that would the melody would fit underneath the chords on the ukulele fretboard. At the bottom of the page here, I thought it was interesting to see the frequency of use of ukulele chords. And uh, for those who don't think it's important to learn C, F, and G, uh, this is something that would tell you that it is. And it would also be useful to then go, okay, I wanna learn C in other positions. And so that would be an education to find C, C chords, F chords, and G chords, and be able to play them in another position. Sometimes when you wanna play the solo, you might locate it at a different position than the nut. Maybe you'd wanna go up to the seventh fret so you'd have some variety in the song. I picked a few songs that I thought were illustrative of um, ways we could use this knowledge in everyday playing, okay? I've got the uh, song, That's All Right Mama. I think Elvis's first uh, big hit was That's All Right Mama. But let's play it in the key of A and we'll then sort out how to transpose it. And I've written down the range of this song, which it would be important to know if you're gonna set up a song for you to sing, that you can hit that note at the top and at the bottom. So let's try it in A. That's a, a good good for a blues song. This is a blues song. And um, let's just go ahead and play That's All Right, Mama. One, two, three. Okay, so if that's felt low to the vocalist who you were backing and they said, well, I, can we push that up from A to C anyway? I'd rather sing it in C. So your first note instead of, that's all right, you'd be singing, that's all right, mama. You can see right there that you can just take your C scale. This is the chord scale we talked about for C, C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, and C, and put the one, four, and five underneath the A. Okay, so you can sort that out. Playing in C, you're gonna have C and the seventh. The four chord is F, which we're playing an F seventh and a G seventh. And I might use that closed chord format, which looks like, like this, like an F with your other two fingers down, with a C on top, uh, in order to get that D to E. Let's see if we can't uh, and play it in C. So we're, th we're looking at A's and we're, we're going to play C, right? That's So that's an example of transposing from A up to C. And you can do that pretty much on the fly. It shows some things that are, are benefited by doing that. You can uh, work that walk up from the F7 to the G7 if you wanted to. I also wanted to deal with the 1, 6, 4, 5, the doo-wop progression that you see there, a teenager in love 
So I taught this to my um, eight-year-old granddaughter uh, the other day, and she was fine with, with this sort of progression. I mean, and it, it leads to having your fingers in the right position in the key of C. So let's just get going with the uh, teenager in love. It's important to know your first note. That's a G. So we're going to play C, and you might want to play a 's starts in C anyway and it uses the dominant seven so looking for the five seven chord as a matter of fact in looking at jazz uh, arrangements the five seven to one is the most reliable way to sort out what key it's in do I see a, a chord that could be a five seven going to a chord that could be a one this all makes sense you got six minor here this is the quote doo-wop progression in C. If I wanted to play it in F, I can just count it out of my fingers, F, G, A, B flat, and C. So it's F, B flat, and C are the one, four, five chords. And in this case, we need to know the sixth chord, which is a D minor. Let's move on to one that is, is really set up for an analysis like this, okay? And if you look down below, we're gonna start this is in the key of C. It actually begins in C, it ends in G. So that's okay. Again, our, our hypothesis is that this is in C. And then does it make sense? Well, we've got F and G as the other major chords. The minor chords are D minor and E minor. Sure, that makes sense. As a matter of fact, what Dylan is doing here, he's going once upon a time, he dressed so fine, he threw the bums and dime, in your prime, didn't you? So he's walking up the corded scale from one to five, and then he's gonna go back down. And, um, and then you're using the one, four, five as your um, chorus, if you will. But as you can see, just to, to warn you, once we get through the first two lines, I'm gonna ask you to play a one chord. In the key of C, what would the one chord be? C. The two minor chord would be D minor. The three minor chord would be E minor. The four chord in the key of C is F, and the five chord is G. This is the same sort of thing, F, G, the four chord and the five chord. And then this is a walk down from F E minor, D minor, C, from the four chord down through the three minor, two minor, and one. And so I would just like us to play through this. And the it's not so difficult because I provided half the chords for you. But after we're done for today, see if you can do this in a different key. Okay? Maybe just write in the, uh, the one chord here and see if you can pl play it in F. I've provided those shapes for you to be able to play it in F, but let, let's just get the feel of what a song is like starting in the key of C and walking up the chorded scale. And so it has an intro, one, four, one, which is, and I've got the uh, standard sort of 